Hi, I'm Emily Ambinder. I'm an assistant professor of radiology and oncology at Johns Hopkins Medicine. And I'm very excited to have the opportunity to talk today about a recent paper that my group published in AJR on one view asymmetries. I wanna start with some background. The BIRAS Atlas defines a one view asymmetry as a fibroglandular density finding that does not meet the criteria for a mass seen on a single standard mammographic view, either the medial lateral oblique or the craniocaudal view. Asymmetry is a common recalled finding, but most of these asymmetries are found to represent overlapping breast tissue on subsequent diagnostic evaluation. Limited data derived from screening mammograms that have been given a BIRADS category zero assessment indicate that mammographic asymmetries have a low malignancy rate between 1.8 and 3.6%. DBT has improved our ability of breast imaging to detect findings on screening examinations. Multiple studies have shown that screening studies performed with DBT have increased cancer detection rates and decreased recall rates. We conducted the present study to compare clinical outcomes of one view asymmetries recalled from screening mammograms that were performed with DBT versus full field digital mammography and determine predictors of malignancy among the recalled asymmetries for both modalities. Starting uh, going to the method section, our uh, electronic health record system is EPIC and we evaluated all of the screening mammograms that per were performed at our institution between July 2016 and July 2020. Uh, with, uh, with EPIC, we have a findings function where when we recall screening mammograms, we indicate what the finding is that we are recalling and we're able to automatically pull all of the screening mammograms that were recalled for a one view asymmetry. We did a manual chart review for all of these studies that were ultimately given a BIRADS three or four to make sure that it was the one view asymmetry that was given this final BIRADS assessment. And also to be sure that any ultimate uh, cancers that were diagnosed were truly the one view finding that was uh, described on the, the initial mammogram. The decision of performing a screening mammogram with either full field digital mammography or digital breast tomosynthesis was at the discretion, discretion of the ordering provider and the patient. I want to quickly go through our institutional uh, workup protocol for one view asymmetries. Uh, when a patient is recalled for a one view asymmetry, we always repeat the full view that the finding was seen in, and we also obtain a true lateral view. We always do these with digital breast tomosynthesis, regardless, regardless of which modality was uh, the, screening, the screening mammogram was performed with. If the finding persists, then we obtain a spot compression view. If the finding does not completely efface on spot compression view, then we always do a targeted ultrasound. If a sonographic correlate is identified, then the sonographic appearance will guide the next step. So it'll, if it's a simple cyst, we would assess it as benign. If it has the appearance of a, uh, of a probably benign finding, then we would recommend a six month follow-up. And of course, if there are any suspicious features, then we would recommend an ultrasound guided by FC. We always do a post-clip mammogram to confirm that the ultrasound finding is truly the correlate for the mammographic asymmetry. If we don't identify a sonographic correlate, then the finding can either be followed or biopsied, and that's done at the discretion of the radiologist. For this study, we defined uh, the final outcome as benign for, uh, for several different groups. So first, if uh, it was, the finding was given a BIRADS 1 or 2 on the diagnostic workup, then we considered that benign. For findings that were given a BIRADS 3, they needed to have the full two-year follow-up for, um, for us to put them into that benign category. Uh, for studies that were given a BIRADS 4, then we classified them based on the biopsy results. Patients who were lost to follow-up after the screening exam were excluded. Patients who had an incomplete BIRADS 3 follow-up were excluded. And patients that were lost to follow-up after the biopsy recommendation were excluded. Uh, these are, we have uh, flow diagrams showing uh, the, the number of total screening mammograms for DBT performed during the study period. You can see there was over 120,000 of those, over 3,000 were recalled for a one view asymmetry. We um, ultimately include uh, just over 3,000 mammograms uh, performed in over 3,000 unique patients in the study who were, uh, did, were not lost to follow up. And a total of 54 malignancies were ultimately diagnosed. This is a similar flow chart for the FFDM screening mammograms. You can see that we had almost 24,000 uh, mammograms in this group with 815 recalled asymmetries. 
uh, four were excluded due to loss to follow up and a total of 811 studies and 802 unique patients were ultimately included. And we found a total of 14 malignancies. The recall rate was specifically for one view asymmetries was, was lower for the DPT group compared to the FFDM group, 3.6% versus 2.4%. The baseline characteristics of patients in the two groups were, were similar. You can see age, breast density, whether or not there was a prior screening mammogram in the final BIRADS category after the diagnostic workup, all similar between the two groups. Um, this table shows comparison to biopsy modality, biopsy outcome, and screening performance characteristics for the two groups. And again, we did not see any significant difference. I want to specifically draw your attention to the similar PPV1 and PPV3 between the two groups. So for PPV1, 1.7% in both groups. For PPV3, 22.6 versus 23% in the two groups. No significant difference. Um, this is, this uh, is a comparison of the cancers diagnosed in each, groups, in, each, uh, in each group. When we looked at how those findings were ultimately described after the diagnostic workup, we saw that there were differences based on whether or not the asymmetry was recalled from a DBT or an FFDM screening mammogram. For the asymmetries that were recalled from uh, tomosynthesis, the 70% uh, of them were ultimately found to represent a mass, 9% uh, in architectural distortion, and 20% were still described in asymmetry. In the FFDM group, Interestingly, over 35% of the cases were ultimately that's described as an architectural distortion. None were still described as an asymmetry and 64% were described as a mass. Uh, the other significant difference that we found was the final histologic subtype for these cancers. With almost all of the cancers diagnosed in the FFDM group representing invasive ductal carcinomas, you can see 13 out of the 14 cancers with the one other cancer representing an invasive mucinous carcinoma. In the DBT group, there was a, a much larger range with um, a pretty high percent of invasive lobular carcinomas. You can see about 24% of those cancers were invasive lobular. Uh, this shows uh, univariate and multivariate regression analysis for predictors of malignancy on digital breast homosynthesis. We stratified these, uh, these tables on which modality the asymmetries were recalled from. And we can see in the tomosynthesis group, age, breast density, and the availability of prior screening mammograms were all predictors of malignancy in the univariate analysis. On multivariate analysis, age and breast density were both predictors, so older age and having not on dense breast tissue. Uh, in the FFDM group, now this was a, a, a much smaller group where there was only 14 cancers in this group, but we did find that age was a significant predictor, uh, but only that 55 to 69 age group, the um, greater than 70 age group was, non, was not significant. Um, we didn't see any other significant uh, predictors of malignancy in this subgroup. I wanted to show some examples of one view asymmetry. So here we have um, a left CC mammogram that was normal. And then the second image shows an MLO view and we can see an asymmetry in the upper breast indicated by the arrow. The third image is just a zoomed in view of that asymmetry. And the final view is a spot compression view showing that that asymmetry persists. There was no sonographic correlate for this finding. And so we performed a tomosynthesis guided biopsy. And this was found to represent a, a triple positive invasive ductal carcinoma. Uh, this is another example of a one view asymmetry. Again, um, the left CC view was normal, but we saw this asymmetry in the upper breast on the MLO view. The third image shows a zoomed in view of that asymmetry, and the, uh, the final image shows a spot compression view showing that that asymmetry persists. This finding also did not have a sonographic correlate, and we did a tomosynthesis guided biopsy, which resulted in benign breast tissue. Uh, now for the discussion, we, we compared outcome uh, metrics for asymmetries recalled from DBT versus FFDM. We found that the recall rate for asymmetries was lower for DBT than FFDM screening exams, 3.6% versus 2.4%. We did not find any differences in the distribution of final BIRADS categories, PPV1 or PPV3. We found that the cancers diagnosed on DBT versus FFDM 
uh, that there were, there were some differences in these. So in the FFMGM group, group, these were more likely to be IDC, where it was uh, in the DBT group, we found uh, over 20% represented ILCs. Uh, also in the FFDM group, these were more likely to be described as architectural distortion on the diagnostic workup. We didn't see any other differences on the cancers diagnosed between the two groups. So we, uh, you know, we wondered why are the malignancy rates the same for these two groups? And we had uh, two hypotheses um, and it may be the combination of these two factors. So first, it's possible that FFDM screening identified some IDCs that would have been described as architectural distortion on the DBT screening exam instead of described as an asymmetry. Um, because we did see that in that FFDM group, a lot of those asymmetries that turned out to be cancers were ultimately described as a distortion. Also, the TBT screening group had a, a higher percentage of ILCs, and some of these subtle ILCs may have been missed on the FFDM screening exam. Uh, I next wanted to talk about predictors of malignancy. In the DBT group, high breast density was a predictor of malignancy. Older age was a predictor of malignancy in both groups. Uh, for uh, the DBT group, that included all patients over 55. In the FFDM group, only that 55 to 69 age group was significant. And the prior, whether or not there was a prior screening exam, exam was also significant in the DBT group and only on the univariate analysis. Um, I just wanted to uh, review the highlights of the study before I conclude. Um, so DBT compared with FFDM had a lower recall rate associated with one view asymmetries. The frequency of malignancies was 1.7% for both modalities. Malignant asymmetries were more commonly IDC in the FFDM group compared to the DBT group, and they were less commonly invasive lobular carcinoma. And why is, it, why is this all important? Well, DBT screening mammography reduces unnecessary recalls without altering the PPB for asymmetry, asymmetry associated malignancies. Um, these are the references that I use for this study. And I wanted to thank you for attention, um, including my email address here if anybody has any, any questions. Thank you so much for the attention and for the invitation.